Hi everyone, and welcome back to another character building video. Today I'm showing you how to play like Kratos, the god of war, in Dungeons and Dragons. He begins as a young Spartan warrior who turns on the gods that used him and finds out he is also the demigod son of Zeus. Kratos had his family's ashes bound to his skin as a curse. This led to the title Ghost of Sparta. Some of his key features are his physicality, his rage abilities, and his use of the Blades of Chaos. While there is a valid argument for picking Asimar as his race due to the divine aspect of his heritage, we are picking Goliath. The aesthetic for Goliath matches Kratos, being that they both have odd skin tones, skin markings, in addition to being large, muscular and bald. It is a bit of a stretch, but Goliath are descended from giants. While Greek gods can have a giant form and typically descend from titans, the ability score increases from Goliath will suit our build much more, with Stone's Endurance keeping you in the fight much more at lower levels. Using point by we select 14 Strength, 14 Dexterity, 15 Constitution, 8 Intelligence, 10 Wisdom and 10 Charisma. Ratio bonuses will bring both Strength and Constitution to 16. While he starts as a soldier, Goliath already get the athletics proficiency. It is for this reason that I would take inspiration from his journey out of ancient Greece and into Midgard, taking the far traveller background. You gain insight and perception proficiencies, an instrument or gaming set, and the language of your choice. For the first level, pick fighter, taking the intimidation and survival proficiencies. Take the two weapon fighting style, letting you add your ability modifier to the damage dealt by offhand bonus action attacks made while dual wielding. The Blades of Chaos are chain whips with short swords on the end. Whips are finesse weapons, meaning you can choose to use dexterity as the attacking modifier. We are going to use strength. Until we can dual wield whips, we will dual wield short swords and keep a whip handy. While dual wielding, we can attack as an action and then make another weapon attack as a bonus action. You also get the second wind feature, healing 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. The Son of Zeus is a bit more durable than the average man. Level 2, we take our first level in Barbarian. This grants Kratos his Spartan Rage. As a bonus action, you can enter your Rage. While raging without heavy armor, you have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. You gain Rage bonus damage to attacks made with strength, which will apply to your whips, and you resist bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing damage. While raging, you can't cast spells or concentrate, which has no impact on our character build. Your rage lasts for one minute unless you are knocked unconscious, or if your turn ends and you haven't attacked or been hit since your last turn. You start with two uses of rage between long rests and the bonus damage is currently plus two. First level barbarians also get unarmored defense which uses dexterity and constitution and can also benefit from a shield. Your resting AC is currently 15. Level three, we take our second level in barbarian. We get the feature Danger Sense, which gives us advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects you can see, such as traps and spells. And we also get the Reckless Attack feature. Reckless Attack is something you can trigger when you make your first attack roll on your turn. If you choose to do so, all of your melee weapon attacks using strength on that turn can be rolled with advantage. The trade-off is that attack rolls against you have advantage until your next turn. Level 4 we take Barbarian again, picking a primal path. As a born demigod, a former serving weapon of a god, and later as the god of war himself, we need at least some divine flavour. We are taking the Zealot subclass. You gain the Divine Fury feature and will pick the Radiant Damage type. When you are raging, you can add 1d6 plus half of your Barbarian level in Radiant Damage to the first hit of each of your turns. You also gain the Warrior of the Gods feature, meaning spells that restore you to life don't require material components. Level 3 Barbarians also get a third Rage in between long rests. Level 5 we take Barbarian to level 4, getting an ability score increase. We will take the Dual Wielder feat, which enables us to dual wield weapons that aren't heavy, but also lack the light property. Although the damage die reduces, we will start dual wielding whips. Our level 5 Kratos now has Blades of Chaos that can deal 2d4 plus 6 strength plus 4 rage in weapon damage and 1d6 plus 2 in radiant damage in a whole turn across 2 weapon attacks. This averages at 20.5 damage per turn while raging at 10 feet away while rolling at advantage and resisting some damage types. Level 6 we take Barbarian to level 5. Here we get the extra attack feature letting us make 2 weapon attacks per turn, bringing your average damage per turn to 28 while raging. Level 5 Barbarians also get fast movement, which increases your speed by plus 10 while you aren't wearing heavy armour. Level 7 we take our second level on Fighter, gaining us the Action Surge feature. Once per short rest, you can take one additional action on your turn. This can make you swing your Blades of Chaos a total of 5 times in one round by using 2 attack actions and 1 bonus action. 
at your current ability scores and level, that would average around 48 damage. Level 8 is our first level in Rogue. You gain an additional skill proficiency, picking up Stealth and two Expertise options going into Athletics and Intimidation. We also get the Sneak Attack feature. Sneak Attack can deal extra damage once per turn on an attack made with a finesse or ranged weapon, as long as you had advantage on the attack roll, or the target of the attack has another enemy within 5 feet of it that isn't incapacitated and you don't have disadvantage on the roll. This extra damage is currently 1d6. Your whips are finesse weapons that you are using your strength modifier with, and as you will likely be using reckless attack all the time, you will always have advantage. Therefore, you will almost always meet the conditions to use sneak attack. First level rogues also learn the thieves can't language. Level 9 is again into rogue. You gain the cunning action feature letting you dash, disengage or hide as a bonus action. Level 10 is your third level in rogue letting you pick an archetype. Kratos was raised in Sparta and had to learn to scout for survival in childhood. We will pick the scout subclass which will give us a skirmisher feature. If an enemy finishes its turn within 5 feet of you, you can spend your reaction to move up to half of your movement speed away without provoking an opportunity attack. You also get the survivalist feature which gives you expertise in the survival and nature proficiencies. Level 3 rogues also increase their sneak attack damage to 2d6. Level 11 we take our 4th level in Rogue where we get another ability score increase adding 2 to our strength taking it to 18. Level 12 we take our 5th level in Rogue, here we get the uncanny dodge feature. This lets you spend your reaction when you are hit with an attack you can see to have the damage against you. As this can be used every turn, this will overshadow your stone's endurance feature. But remember that your single use of stone's endurance can be used whenever you take any type of damage, even if you can't see it. 5th level rogues also increase their sneak attack damage to 3d6. Level 13 we take our 6th level in rogue, where you get another 2 expertise options. Use this choice to round out your party. Level 14 we take our 7th level in rogue, where you get the evasion feature. When you are subjected to an effect that allows you to make a dexterity saving throw to only take half damage, you instead take no damage if you pass and half damage if you fail. As your barbarian danger sense gives you advantage on these rolls, you will be taking a lot less damage than usual. 7th level rogues also increase their sneak attack damage to 4d6. Level 15 we take our 8th level in rogue where we get another ability score increase. We take 2 more strength to max it to 20. Level 16 we take our 9th level in rogue where we get superior mobility subclass feature. This is a 10 foot increase to movement speed bringing our total base speed to 50. 9th level rogues also increase our sneak attack damage to 5d6. Level 17 we take our 10th level in rogue which is another ability score increase. To really show off Kratos' durability, I would be inclined to pick the tough feat here. Increases to constitution also have their merit because of the increase to hit points, saving through score, and AC, but we must acknowledge that at these higher levels, most attacks that swing for him will hit. This is because whenever he uses reckless attack, he is given the enemy advantage. The tough feat keeps him in the fight for longer. In your campaign, if you find yourself struggling with a certain type of saving through, then the resilient feat is also a good option. Level 18 we take our 11th level in Rogue, here we get the Reliable Talent feature letting you treat the roll of a 9 or lower as a 10 for any ability check you have proficiency with. 11th level Rogues also increase their sneak attack damage to 6d6. Level 19 we take our 12th level in Rogue for yet another ability score increase. Your whip deals slashing damage, the slasher feat would bump your dex up by 1 point, it would let you reduce one creature's speed by 10 feet once per turn until the start of your next turn if you hit it with a slashing weapon, and if you score a critical hit on a creature, you cause it to have disadvantage on attack rolls until the start of your next turn. If you were taking the resilient feat and selected dexterity, the slasher feat will round out your dexterity score to 16. If you have taken the tough feat before this, then the resilient feat is still a good option here in any ability score that you don't have proficiency saving throws in, like intelligence. Level 20 we take our 13th level in Rogue. You get the Ambush Master feature, giving you advantage on initiative rolls. In addition, the first creature you hit on the opening round of combat can be attacked with advantage by everyone until the start of your next turn. 13th level Rogues also increase their sneak attack damage to 7d6. So how do we do? We are a consistent damager. You can make 3 weapon attacks every turn with advantage. While your rage is activated, you deal 3d4 whip, plus 15 strength, plus 6 rage, plus 1d6, plus 2 radiant, plus 7d6 sneak attack damage. This averages to 58.5 points of damage per turn without spending any resources. Maneuverability. You have 50 foot base speed, can bonus action dash, you can free disengage half your speed as a reaction, you have advantage on initiative rolls and can hit enemies from 10 feet away. 
survivability, you have a good pool of hit points thanks to some levels in Barbarian combined with a reasonable constitution score and maybe the tough feat. You can mitigate incoming damage with rage, you can stones endurance or uncanny dodge the damage, you can make dexterity saving throws with advantage and only take half damage if you fail or none if you pass. You can stay out of danger's way with your maneuverability, and even if you did die, it doesn't cost much to bring you back. Physical power, most characters would be screwed if they grappled with you, as you have 20 strength, expertise in athletics, your rage gives you advantage on strength checks, which grappling falls under, and you can push, drag, lift, weight as if you were a size larger. Unfortunately, our education was in war and not books, so we lack a good intelligence score. We also have neutral charisma and wisdom. Avoid putting yourself in situations relying on these. Also, our AC will probably be behind everyone else's throughout the campaign. Not to worry, with their maneuverability and survivability already outlined, we won't suffer too heavily while using your consistent damage to kill your enemies before they can kill you. So there you have it, Kratos and Dungeons and Dragons, even with his Blades of Chaos. Subscribe for future content and leave a comment for any suggestions. I'll see you next time and thank you for watching.